Hi, in this video I'll be taking another look at the MXC Foundation and the MatchX M2 Pro Minor. They're back in the news after a very controversial AMA meeting and after the introduction of a surprise feature called the Minor Health feature. We'll talk about this in, in a bit more detail in this video. And I will also be putting some questions that I haven't been able to clarify besides the ones that I've already raised in the previous two videos. So stay tuned. I'll be back very shortly. Hey everyone, Crypto Layman here. Thank you very much for tuning back in. So I know this is going to be a controversial topic, but I feel obligated to express my opinion on this because there are a lot of people who have invested a lot of hard-earned cash into this project. Following the recent AMA meeting, they have introduced a new feature which nobody was expecting, and it's to do with the minor health. We'll look at that very shortly. I will ex try and explain what that would mean in practical terms for anybody who is actually mining these tokens using the MatchX M M2 Pro Miner. First of all, we'll look at the factors that determine the miner health. So the miner health is a new feature introduced by the MXC Foundation, and they have essentially said that there are several factors that impact the performance of the MatchX M2 Pro Miner. Those factors directly impact the mining rate and the mining results of this miner. Now those factors being, first of all, the elevation of your miner. So the higher it is situated, the better. The second one is its GPS accessibility. So if it's accessible through GPS, the uptime is a vector based on the previous seven days uptime data and miner proximity to each other. Up until recently, up until this new new development, so to speak, the proximity of these miners to each other was not an issue. People were actually saying, oh, I can have 10 of these devices next to each other and they will all yield the same results. Now, my question there was, if you have 10 devices next to each other, what value would they add to the network in terms of providing coverage for the IoT network? Lo and behold, all of a sudden, MXC's whole attitude towards having these miners in close proximity has changed. So just to illustrate this point, if you can see on these images that are scrolling past, there are three miners here proudly standing right next to each other with probably an inch or maybe inch and a half gap between them. Now, this is something that they were advocating uh, very strongly and they were saying, oh, you can have, uh, you know, several of these devices next to each other and they won't impact each other's earnings. They will all earn the same amount. Yeah, again, there is another illustration of three miners right next to each other, again, with only a few inches uh, worth of gap between them. If you um, carry on scrolling, there are several other examples that I can show you here. There you go, there is a, an outside mast and you have two MatchX M2 Pro miners that are next to each other. Then you have somebody flying uh, their miner with a drone. I don't know what purpose that would achieve. I suppose it just looks cool. Again, there is another picture where you have four in a row. So it was one of those main selling points. So you can have you know, 10 of these in the same room. This now has become an issue and this will impact your minor health. It will have a 7% impact. Now, that's only a 7% uh, impact, so people can easily compromise on that. So if you have miners too close and everything else is in order, your miner will be running at 93% capacity. Now, the next thing they have said is they have introduced a new feature called fuel tank. So in order for your miner to mine, they now say that it needs to have fuel in the tank. So now you need to have MXC tokens in the miner, in the fuel tank. The fuel tank is essentially the wallet within the miner where you receive your mined tokens. All the tokens that, that you mine go straight into your miner's fuel tank. Now that fuel tank needs to remain full. The funny thing here is this fuel tank doesn't appear to have a maximum capacity. So say a car, for instance, has a tank with a 56 or 55 or 60 litres capacity. I don't know how much that is in gallons. I do apologise. So 
once you have that amount of fuel in the car, the remainder will overspill, right? Not with this tank. This tank is limitless. So the more fuel you put into the tank, the tank mysteriously expands and expands and expands to adjust that amount of fuel. For example, if you have 100 tokens mined, the 100 tokens will represent 100% of your tank. And if you withdraw 10 tokens, you're emptying 10% of that tank. If you have mined 100,000 tokens, the tank's capacity is going to be 100,000 tokens. It's really strange how they've worked it, in my opinion. And again, this is my opinion. You have every right to disagree with this. They're doing this in the guise of providing liquidity to the upcoming NFT market and all that palaver. The bottom line is, and this is what I think, they don't want people to withdraw MXC tokens and sell them. Because if you withdraw and if you sell, you're taking money out of their ecosystem. Like a classical Ponzi or pyramid scheme, you are at a grassroots level. Around 90% of these tokens are in private investors' hands. The MXC Foundation itself claims to be a non-profit organization. However, they have investors behind them and the investors are in there for money. So only 10% of the token are actually going to the bottom bit of the pyramid. You are the guys who are buying these expensive devices, putting them in your houses, powering them up, running them on a daily basis, worrying about getting your return back. And now they come and throw a curveball and tell you, you you shouldn't really withdraw any of those tokens because if you do, you will mine less and you will lose out. If you try and sell, you will deplete the fuel in your fuel tank and the miner's performance will go down. So they are trying to trap you in a vicious circle. What I would suggest is, please, 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 but first of all, try and take out your initial investment. Recover that initial investment, whatever is left over, leave it in that tank, leave it in there let it accumulate that's perfectly fine now i have a few questions still that i want answered so first of all this match x pro apparently their technology is patented so i want to know what their patented technology is and whether or not there is actually a patent pending or approved now it's all good making all these claims but can you put your money where your mouth is so I want to know more about the, the patent that they have. MXC Foundation, if you are listening to this, can you please provide us with the Match X M2 Pro's patent number uh, so we can have a look as to whether or not the technology exists and whether or not it has been patented indeed, as you claim. Just uh, as an example, here is uh, the patent uh, for the Holo uh, blockchain, the Holo chain. That's all patented and the patent has been approved. So if we go on the same website and we try and search MXC, there we go. That's a trademark. Uh, but where is the Match X M2 Pro? Can we see a patent? No, not for MXC. Let's see if we can find anything for Match X. Unfortunately, nothing there at all. Anyway, so I can't find a patent. Can you please provide a patent number for this device so we can have a look at what it does? Patents are publicly available to be seen, so there shouldn't be any confidentiality elements there. So I don't think that that, that excuse will cut it now. Secondly, I was looking into some claims that MatchX have been making. And one of the biggest claims they made was that they are working with the Chinese government, particularly in, in the district of Shanghai. And if you look at the the news articles here this is a news article from future iot published on the 19th of march 2019 and it says that shanghai teams up with berlin based non-profit in smart city initiative if you look at it the, the article mostly quotes everything from mxc's uh, perspective because she was quoting somebody called shen zin who apparently confirmed this who is the director of science and technology department of the shanghai district so i decided oh let's have a look at their website so if it is something that they've you know partnered up with uh, mxc in surely they would have uh, announced this somewhere on their website as well or in their news and there are several sort of news articles um, in the science and technology commission of shanghai municipality so there we go 
that is the actual site that article was published in march 2019 so we have an article here in march 2019 which mentions something about gene editing not as safe as it seems uh, and unfortunately there is absolutely no mention of mxc whatsoever so where does this one-sided news where is it coming from i mean come on give me something solid then i did uh, the same thing and i decided to sort of look at the company that they are partnered with to run these smart bins in new york city and unfortunately couldn't find anything there either no mention on jinko's website who are formerly known as city sense when they partnered up with them i am really struggling to substantiate anything that is actually coming from this organization and i need your help to actually get to the bottom of this the patent i can't find anywhere for the matrix m2 pro that you claim that is it's patented technology where is the evidence that you're collaborating with the, uh, the government of china government of shanghai where is the actual official newsletter from them confirming your story please stop making last minute changes you're playing with people's money and you can't just change things on a whim that is absolute nonsense you've had a go at me for criticizing you in the past as well you're more than welcome to do that again i do not care i am going to tell you how it is that's it let me know what your thoughts are let me know what you think of this project and i would love to hear your opinion so please refrain from uh, using abusive words because those comments get automatically filtered out by the youtube algorithm and i will probably not see them anyway so if you want to swear be my guest but you will just get your own account banned that's it if you want to have a meaningful and and constructive conversation be my guest Thank you very much for tuning in. Look after yourselves and I will speak to you soon.